Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm coming to you guys to make a video here on the 2021 F-150. This is a video I actually cut earlier this week, but I ended up shelving because I wasn't sure if it was uh, premature. But between seeing an article yesterday and also having a failed update on the computer module, I decided I think it's time to, to make this video. Now the article that I'm talking about that I saw yesterday was from Tesla Roddy. Now I've never really followed Tesla Roddy all that closely, but after buying my hybrid F-150, some articles kind of drew me over there. And I saw this one yesterday from their article about Ford delaying Blue Cruise. Now Blue Cruise is the self-driving capability that Ford is gonna be rolling out. Now what I had found most interesting of the article wasn't really the article itself because I'd already heard the news that Ford had announced in their last earnings call that Blue Cruise would actually be delayed from originally being Q3 of 2021, which is far long gone, to Q1 of 2022. Now Tesla Roddy wrote a story about that as a lot of people did, I shared it on my channel. But what was interesting is Ford still has not reached out to customers to let them know that it's delayed. They did, however, reach out to Tesla Roddy to correct their story, I suppose you'd say, that uh, it actually has been being rolled out on some new 2021s that are currently rolling off the line. So the question that I ask is, is Ford more interested in just crafting a narrative for potential customers and investors than they are for actual paying customers? Because again, they're correcting stories to Tesla Roddy, who ultimately I would say their customers or their reader base is probably not F-150 buyers to begin with. I think Ford knows that and they're trying to craft that narrative to those potential buyers. It just stinks of horrible customer relation management. Now I know there's going to be a whole slew of people that'll comment down below. I have my 2021 F-150 and it's working great. I love this truck, best truck I ever bought. That's great. This video is not for you. This is my 2021 F-150 and my not so great experience so far. Now I am not here to tell people not to buy an F-150 in this form in the future. I'm here to tell you that if you buy one, you might be dealing with problems like I am currently dealing with. Now, my ultimate hope is that I'm coming back to you guys in a month or two and saying that this is the best truck I've ever bought after having some initial hiccups, everything is great and I love it. And I'll come back and make that video if that's the case. But I just can't seem to get over the fact that Ford sold me a truck. It's having a lot of issues with computer modules, uh, the electronics aren't working great. The quality control seems to be lackluster. And uh, that's what I wanna talk about. Now, before I get into the computer modules and those issues that I'm having, which honestly are the most concerning and major issues that I'm having at this point in time, I do wanna talk about just some general quality control things that I had noticed that um, I think really should never have left a factory the way that they were. Number one is I noticed after about a week or so of owning the truck, that driving in sunrise or sunset conditions, that there was this haze on the windshield. And I thought, well, it looks like overspray, but I almost discounted that right away because it's a brand new truck, came from the factory. They don't paint these trucks with the windshields in them. And I know that. So how is there, there just made no sense that overspray would be on the vehicle. So the next thing that I thought was, maybe it's delaminating and these windshields have this sound screen. It's a whole different type of windshield I've never seen before. So instead of monkeying with it too much, brand new truck, I took it right to the dealership, had them look at it, and they said, sure enough, it's delaminating. So they ordered a new windshield, they said it's gonna take a few days to get in. So I just went and picked my truck back up and drove it as it was. Days turned into like two weeks, so I got tired of waiting. And I took a clay bar that I had, put some water on it, and started kind of going at the windshield. Sure enough, it was overspray, and it blew me away. I'm thinking, how is, how is that even possible? Don't understand it, I've since seen people in the message boards that said they had the same thing. So there's actually still a little bit of it on the driver and passenger side windows, also on the rear view mirrors. It's not seemingly on the back of the truck, but I'm assuming it's all over the paint on the front of the truck too, if it's on the windshield. So I'm gonna have to clay bar the entire truck. That's pretty disappointing from a quality control standpoint. Now, uh, another thing that I had happen here, which was taking my boss to lunch, he opens the door, comes over here and he must have just grabbed the door and I could see how it would happen. Went to close the door and grabbed up at the jam in this spot where there's some plastic. He jumps in my truck and he's like, dude, your truck just cut my hand. And 
I looked at him and I'm like, are you sure that was my truck? That makes no sense. He shows me his hand, it's bleeding, and I had some stuff in the truck, kind of taped it up temporarily. And I look at it later, sure enough, it's some really sharp, rough, jagged plastic edges. It is a sharp edge. I'm gonna have to take a file to it and kind of grind it down a little bit so it doesn't cut anybody else. So that was something I really wasn't all that happy about. Now, another thing I noticed, there was a dent in the tailgate. And it was a dent in the tailgate that had been painted over at the factory. Now that dent in the tailgate wasn't something I had noticed until I actually went to get my bed liner sprayed in and saw it then. And at that point, I'm, it's already sanded down and prepped, so just shoot the bed liner over it. But there was a dent in the tailgate from the factory. And then the last thing that I've noticed that nobody else would probably notice, but I noticed it pretty quickly, is that the armrest in the back seat that folds down is in that opening and it's crooked. I don't know how or why that would happen, uh, but it's like that. Again, I, I'm not taking it in to get it fixed. That's just something that shouldn't happen. I've noticed it, kind of annoying. But uh, those are kind of some, I guess, low hanging fruit things. I uh, also want to mention that I did notice after reading some of the forums, people had mentioned that the fuses weren't fully seated. I did have that on my truck in the engine compartment um, and on the inside that all of the fuses were seemingly barely engaged. You were able to get like another half a push on every single one of them across the board. So it's like they have these things in some sort of template that they just push them in and pull them out and they're not pushing them in all the way. So my concern would be if you did get on some sort of fire road or off-road trail that you could be going down and actually have some of these fuses possibly come loose and, and dislodge and, and deactivate some of your electronics. Um, not sure if that's something that could happen, but theoretically I could see in a world that they were loose enough where it's possible. So those are things that I'm just not really happy about. Again, these are all just easy things that I don't think should leave a factory at all uh, with those conditions. Now on to computer modules and some of those problems I've been having. Uh, I wanna talk about updates. For the first month or so of this truck, it was fine. Everything worked as it should. I was very excited about upcoming new features. And I started to notice just, first of all, the update process. I'm not really a big fan of how it works. There's not a whole lot of transparency to even know what these updates are doing. Now my truck, the first thing I noticed was I got update 1.6.0, which said some minor fine tuning to keep everything running. What does that even mean? There's so many modules in this truck, not a lot of transparency there. I was kind of bummed about that. Well, the next update was 1.4.0. So they're not following any sort of regimented release. So it's 1.6 to 1.4. Okay, whatever. New security alert and pro power on board imp improvements. The security alert updates might have never worked. So still getting errors with that. So I've been waiting for updates ever since then. Then I start seeing some rumblings about a 1.7.1 uh, out there in the wild on forums. It's been out for a couple weeks now. That was important because it has navigation, other enhancements and CarPlay on the gauge cluster. The reason why that's important to me my truck has had this really weird thing going on now for the better part of two months. When I'm driving down the road, the screen just dims to black. It's super annoying, it happens all the time. At first I would just start hitting buttons trying to get it to come back up, couldn't figure out how to get it to come back on, it would just randomly come back up. I've since learned that if you reach over to the left of the steering column and adjust the screen brightness, that you can actually get it to come right back up again. Now what's happening is, it's not like an electrical issue that I'm, I don't think it is at least, because the screen's not going from on to off. It's actually dimming to black as if it's a programming issue telling it to dim to black. When you hit a button to turn the controls back up and down, it's bringing it back up nice and gently back up to on again. I find that to be very bizarre and it seems to be more of a firmware issue. Now I did take it into the dealership. They ran some codes and it turns out that it is reading an APIM code. APIM is the accessory power interface module and that apparently is related to a lot of the electronics on the inside of the truck. So the module seems bad. They've ordered a new one. Now, this is where I start getting into problems with Ford and how they don't hunt them. Now that is where I start having some problems with how Ford is managing their customer relationship experience. I see that they're reaching out to Teslarati to correct stories about how they're not delivering on a product they said they would deliver. The problem is my truck has an accessory power interface module issue. Yesterday, my truck tried to install that update and it failed. I'm assuming it failed because when it went through checks of trying to install these updates, that it saw that there was a code, didn't install it. Now my dealership is saying they can't get me that module. They have one on order, and what they told me is that the module is 
sitting somewhere without the chips and they can't deliver it to me. So Ford is selling this illusion to the general public, people who haven't paid yet, Teslarati readers, that they have all this great stuff. That's what they sold people like me who bought these trucks. But the problem is once you run into a problem, they don't have the hardware to fix it. So I have a truck right now with what I would call a bricked APIM that can't accept new updates. I think those updates might solve a lot of the problems that I'm having. And if you run into these issues, you're just dead in the water. This module has been on order now from my dealership for several weeks. They don't know when they're going to get one. And Ford is still just selling trucks happily on some sort of narrative that this technology is great, but unfortunately they don't have enough of it to go around, not only for new customers who are waiting, you could read the forums, I'll link in the description down below, of people who are waiting for their trucks they've bought. You also have people like me who have bought them, who are having problems, who can't get the modules to fix the problems. So I think Ford needs to slow their roll in how they're marketing this stuff to potential customers and people who have paid for the vehicles uh, until they can fix some of the supply chain stuff. Now I've seen people have said, oh, it's all supply chain stuff because of COVID. It's supply chain stuff because of microchip shortages. It's excuses, excuses, excuses. But I'll tell you what, Ford, they own the relationship management. They own communicating that stuff to customers. And they are doing an abysmal job of doing that. I don't know how or why a company with the resources they have isn't even trying. I just think they're making a calculated decision to say nothing and they're just basically trying to bury it until the problem is solved. But the issue with that is you have people like me who are currently sitting here with a 60 some thousand plus dollar truck that are really not having a great experience. I know there's going to be a lot of people who follow my channel because of this content are gonna say they have their 2021, they love it, no problems whatsoever, they love Ford, Ford diehards. Uh, what's interesting is if you get out of this YouTube world that we live in, step into my office at work, full-time job world, there are four of us now that have bought or have on order 2021s. Three of us have had terrible experiences. So you have me with my Ford. In my situation, you guys can watch the videos, very transparent. Another guy, a, a co-owner of the company, actually has a 2021 Ford F350 uh, power stroke diesel, darn near fully loaded. He's had some issues with his, had to go in for some rear end work. They couldn't get the parts they said, and next thing you know, they were welding on the rear end. Some weird scenario. He wasn't happy, still isn't happy with his Ford experience. Uh, another guy who's uh, higher up for me is uh, a 2021 Bronco order and has had brutal communication, uh, zero communication from Ford on his order. Very unhappy with his experience. And then another guy in IT, uh, he actually just traveled to Texas and brought back, I think, a Big Bend that he bought from a dealership there. Uh, not too sure how his experience is going ownership-wise. Uh, I saw the vehicle when he brought it in first day. I kind of looked around, nice looking truck. He seemed to like it. Now, what I see out of my, I guess you'd call it focus group, four people, is you have four people who want to love Ford. They want to love the products they have on order. And you have three of them that desperately want to love these purchases and are just absolutely totally bummed out and disappointed by Ford's lack of ability to communicate. So what you're seeing is 75% of those customers that uh, are being let down, not necessarily by the products, but by the lack of even attempt of candor, communication, uh, any sort of uh, even remote attempt of communication would go so far with these people who again, want to love their purchases. So I'm gonna close this video off by saying I am one of those people, I want to love this, this purchase. And I hope that I'm coming back in a couple months to talk about how amazing this truck is and how Ford has changed so much that uh, you know I don't regret the purchase. But right now, you know, I would say I do. Now, there's a bunch of people who are gonna comment, I can see it already, that don't worry about the computer stuff, it's a truck and it's, that's all nonsense. If what you're watching this video on right now uh, the screen turned off every sporadically couple minutes or couple seconds and you had to go through a process to bring the screen back up, you would take that device right back to the store and return it. So, you know, unfortunately you can't do that with the vehicles. There's a lot more that goes into it. I'm super bummed out. I am hoping that I'm coming back very soon to tell you guys how my experience has changed so much more for the better. Uh, I'm not holding out hope for that right now. We'll see kind of where that process goes, but 
that's kind of where I'm at, guys. Super bummed out by this whole experience. And it really sucks because honestly, this truck is a total dream to drive. It's been a great running vehicle, but when the experience inside the cab where you spend all your time, all the electronics not working the way they should, things just shutting down randomly, it kind of just ruins the entire experience. Super bummed out by it. Really bummed out by Ford's inability to communicate with paying customers while watching their desire to communicate with investors and potential customers uh, on the Tesla Rati side, trying to speak to those new Ford Lightning buyers that uh, I, I see right through that. Um, when that's the only people that you're reaching out to, to try to correct stories to make them sound better, I see right through it. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember likes go a long way to help support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.